All eyes are on Florence this afternoon, and experts say she could become one of the deadliest and costliest storms in recent history. We have live team coverage for you today. Let's start with 7 News reporter Ben Hoover. He's live in Myrtle Beach. Ben. That's right, Fred. We are here at sunny, beautiful Myrtle Beach at this point. Uh, you can see if I point over this way, folks have already started to board up. They probably started that process a couple of days ago. And also another visible sign that a hurricane is coming. A big hurricane is coming. If you look up here at the famous Ferris wheel, they have taken every gondola off that Ferris wheel in preparation for Hurricane Florence. I am, I, I, according to Myrtle Beach Online, which is a local newspaper here, that Ferris wheel can withstand winds of 135 miles per hour. I do not have that confirmed, but according to a local newspaper, that Ferris wheel can withstand some pretty strong winds. So most folks here in Myrtle Beach, if they have not evacuated yet, and some people have not evacuated, they are still waiting for the storm to get closer. Uh, they woke up this morning to the news that you just heard from our meteorologist that this storm has shifted southwest, and that could bring bigger impacts here to the Grand Strand. What kind of impacts? Well, we're talking about sustained tropical storm force winds and some hurricane force gusts of winds. And as far as uh, storm surge goes, they're thinking potentially four to six feet of storm surge if we want to go ahead and show you uh, what the waves look like at this point. Uh, storm surge could be four to six feet here in the Grand Strand, here in the Myrtle Beach area. They're thinking six to nine feet storm surge uh, up farther north, up towards Cape Fear. I spoke with some folks here uh, just a short time ago who actually have some upstate ties. Uh, one of them lived in the upstate for 15 years in Spartanburg. He followed the love of his life here, down here. So they've lived here now. They have not evacuated. They are live over in a campground, and they are making sure that some of their elderly residents and neighbors are safe and boarded up and have a place to go before they head out of town tonight. But again, these folks here call this one scary and eerie because here we are in September, and it's 90 degrees here and there's barely anybody on the beach or the boardwalk. We'll be here through the storm and bring you the latest tonight at 5, 6, 7, 10, and 11, and throughout the weekend. Fred, back to you. Ben, thank you. All right, we want to show you this amazing video. So this is a time lapse of a hurricane hunter's plane flying into the eye of Florence. Of course, this is something that they do every time a major storm of this nature. We bring in Dan to Let's know a little bit about that, of course, the latest on Florence. And those flights are very important because those planes have got weather instruments on them, so they're taking measurements as they fly through the storm, not just the eye, but all around the storm. And all that data gets put into computer models that forecast the storms, which is why as these tend to get closer and we see more of those flights into the storms, the models change because we get better data, and that allows us to see where the storms are going. And even so, this one's special, Florence is, because it's going to hit a ridge of high pressure, which is going to cause it to slow down or stop. And any time you have a hurricane that is in very weak atmospheric flow, they move erratically. And that's why we're seeing the track change a lot. Again, a Category 4 storm, 130 mile per hour winds. The latest forecast has this as a Category 3 storm just offshore Friday morning. Whether it's Category 4, 3, or 2, it really doesn't matter because there's going to be a lot of storm surge, a lot of wind, and a lot of rain. That track then takes us to the west. Whether this makes landfall on the North Carolina coast or somewhere near Georgetown, still uncertain. In any case, though, it's going to continue to head west once it's over land. It weakens, and the remnants of it could head up over our way going through the course of the weekend and early next week, which puts us on the wet side of that track. Most of the forecast models right around with the National Hurricane Center is thinking, although some, believe it or not, still take this down the coast. So we have to keep a close eye on the rest of the coast because that may then curl up this way. Either way, it's going to mean some wet weather closer to home. Based on the current forecast track, possible rain through the duration of Florence, 20 plus inches of rain in southeastern North Carolina. For us, 7 to 10 inches of rain near Charlotte and to the northeastern upstate, some of the foothills, 3 to 6 inches elsewhere. Keep in mind, as that track shifts, these numbers will as well. But we have to be on guard for the potential for flooding. The timing on that, it's a low threat Saturday. We may have a few showers coming in. The threat increases Sunday. Rain starts to pick up. Our highest threat may be Monday because we're still going to have some heavy rain around and we'll have saturated ground from anything that tries to move in on Sunday. Our breeziest day will be Sunday. 
We're not looking necessarily for tropical storm force winds. We could see tropical storm force wind gusts, though, and heavier squalls. And since we're on the east side of the track, there's going to be a small chance that we can have isolated tornadoes. So here's what you need to know. Forecast Florence is going to be near the coast sometime Friday or Saturday, so it's slowing down. That local rain potential heavy. This may change, but the flooding potential is there, and it's going to be late weekend, early next week will be our highest rain chances. We'll talk more about Florence and show you what our local forecast is when I return. All right, Dan, thank you so much. 7 News' is Christine Scarpelli has been at the state's emergency operations center all week. And she can, continues our live team coverage from Columbia. Christine. Good morning, guys. Absolutely, yeah. As we head into the afternoon, we are just a couple hours ahead of a press conference from the governor here in Columbia, but OPCON 1. That means a lot more is happening here at the Operations Center. Feels a lot different than it has in days past. Very serious, and definitely that danger is approaching from many of those coastal counties. You have heard from past press conferences from the governor urging those that have been asked to evacuate to go and go now. Speaking with, with officials this morning from the South Carolina Department of Transportation, we've been told that those officials have been flying over those uh, lanes and seeing traffic move very well. They say they haven't seen many delays, about two times the amount of normal traffic that you would normally see. Interstate 26, also 501 near the coast moving well. We are uh, being told that shelters are starting to see more people, evacuees, of course, from the coast, just under 30 open right now. And then just a few moments ago, we heard from Harvest Hope, the disaster manager there. We're starting to see the effects as that storm approaches the coast. She says her supplies are completely bare. She asks that us in the upstate do something to help. Take a listen. Not only are we looking at the issues right now, but long term we may have uh, power outages, so we need to have as much non-perishable food because you're not going to have refrigeration and you may not have cooking facilities. Yeah, to the point where she came and found media today. That's how really urgent that need is. So many of us sit at home in the upstate and wonder how we can help. Maybe we will not be as severely impacted as some of those on the coast. Still to be determined, of course, but that is one way you can help today, right now, bringing those non-perishable food items, anything with a pop top, SpaghettiOs, that's the kind of thing you can donate at Harvest Hope right now. Guys, we know in the upstate, right on Whitehorse Road, that location accepting donations right now. We'll send it back to you from the Operations Center here in Columbia. All right, Christine, thank you. Five coastal counties in South Carolina are under a mandatory evacuation, and many hospitals in those areas are closing their emergency rooms. State leaders says that means that they can't guarantee to help those who choose to stay behind. If you stay and if you get stuck in this, you, you're on your own. The, the people can't come get you, and when they do come get you, there's nowhere to take you. All four major hospital systems in the upstate are taking patients from the coast. Bon Secours St. Francis is ready to house up to 100 people at the well in downtown Greenville. This is a coordinated effort between state health officials and the South Carolina Hospital Association. If you have any plans to travel, make sure to check your flight before you head to the airport. The Charleston Airport anticipates closing tonight, and according to FlightAware.com, nearly 200 flights already canceled today nationwide. More than 800 are delayed, and of course, this will only get worse as Florence approaches. Also, because of our many first responders heading to the coast to help, the Forestry Commission has issued a statewide burn ban. That means you can't burn any yard debris or start any campfires because right now there aren't enough firefighters available to help if one gets out of hand. USC has canceled all classes in Columbia through Saturday, and the Clemson Athletic Department expects to announce later today if there will be any changes to Saturday's football game against Georgia Southern. Again, here's the latest on Hurricane Florence. It remains a Category 3 storm. It has sustained winds of 130 miles per hour. Landfall isn't expected until Friday at the earliest, somewhere along the coast of South and North Carolina. Five South Carolina counties remain under a mandatory evacuation order. And, of course, you can always get the latest information at WSP.